If you smoke a watermelon, it's supposed to taste like smoked salmon, so naturally I had to try it, and I'm gonna let you know if you should try it too. Spoiler alert. Maybe. <laughs> I was gonna say absolutely not. I don't think that's gonna work. Just because it's the same color doesn't mean it's gonna taste like smoked salmon. Watch and see. Like many of my videos, we're taking a little journey into the garden, everyone. Loop's going too! Loop's already in there. And we're picking a watermelon. So I've had this little babe, sugar baby watermelon growing on the vine for so long. Um, little tip if you're growing watermelon, the way that you know if they're ready or not is if you tap them and they sound hollow and if the vine starts to die off. Ooh, okay, good tip. I knew the hollow thing. I did not know the vine thing. I find that difficult. I'm like, is it hollow, is it not? I don't know if that's just me, but I can't tell. I know, every time I'm at the grocery store, I'm like, sounds hollow, sounds good to go. You get it home, you're like, no, it's not. Exactly, you can't tell. So. I thought that this was gonna be ready. It was extremely heavy. We've gotten a lot of rain in the last little while. Juicy. So I was like, I hope this is gonna be good. And what better to use this for than to try out this recipe because I've heard so much about smoked watermelon and it tasting so much like smoked salmon. So I was like, I have my doubts. Yeah, but I feel like vegan stuff sometimes, just cause it looks like whatever it's supposed to like mimic, doesn't mean it's gonna taste like that. I'm I know. sorry, I don't, I don't know like why that is the case. I know. And so of course I'm using pellets for this recipe because we wanna get that smoky flavor. Imagine if you forgot to do the pellets. And we've it's just some, like a hot had, watermelon. <laughs> we've had some epic forgets before when it comes to smoking on this thing. Yeah, I'm like, this is pretty basic. There's not much to this recipe. So you have to remember all the aspects to it. And the pellets are one of the most important aspects. But yet we always forget it. I don't get it. I know. Definitely wanna remember the pellets on this because we're looking for that smoky smoked salmon flavor. To set the cooker, I wanted to make the temperature as low as it would possibly go, which is 300 degrees. Fahrenheit. So you actually want them to go like a low and slow type experience here? Yes, you have to go very, very low over a long period of time. That's the only way that you're gonna get apparently that smoked salmon vibe, which yeah. I was like, I, right off the top, you know what I'm feeling like this is gonna go into? <laughs> what? Fruit leather. I know, it's, but watermelon- Like dehydrated fruits. Watermelon has so much water to it that we're not gonna have it low and slow for eight hours and it's gonna turn into like a fruit by the foot. Which don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed to a fruit leather. I no. think that would be delectable, but do I want it on my sushi? Probably not. No, me neither. So very, very simple. We just, I have the pan that came with this unit that we're gonna be using to put the watermelon on top of. I like to line it with foil because I've done it where I didn't line it with foil once and it was stick city. Can we just talk about this pan and the fact that it comes with the actual unit? Because I've been using it for everything and I hate when you get like a particular cooker and it doesn't come with the bare basics of what you need to use it. I do too and I love that it has this rack with it as well. I use the rack all the time. I just did a cook and I forgot that it came with the rack. I love the rack because- I already lost my rack I think. What? The rack literally, is the best part. Literally, I was just thinking I need, this could have benefited from the rack. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, I love using the rack because it suspends ingredients in the air and then smoke goes all around them. Genius for using it here. Okay. Um, Look at how beautiful. Congrats, honey. Thank how you. How long did that take to, for that from seed to growth? to fruit. Approximately 18 years. Like, that's what I know. So melons take a long time, it, so like you deserve all the credit on that. It took so long, but let me tell you, it is worth it. And you'll notice, this is not a seedless watermelon. There is tons of seeds in this little guy, but in my opinion, watermelon with the seeds tastes so much better than seedless watermelon. I know, I don't know why. It's like been, it's like it's been less tampered with. Yes, it's so sweet. or something. So sweet, super juicy. I was just loving every minute of it here. Getting why are you, I don't like your spit technique. I don't like your, okay. I was spinning, okay. Okay. oh okay. no. <laughs> I don't like it though. You need to eat, chew, projectile spit. He's being like the, when you're I out. Do. The best part about summertime watermelon, especially cause you're eating it outside, is projectile spitting it, seeing how far you can spit it. You can, but in this case, I'm facing my home. I'm not gonna projectile spit into the window. Don't <laughs> act like you're like such a lady and you haven't projectile spit before. You, okay, can we stop this conversation? <laughs> oh dear Lord. <laughs> so we're cutting- Melons and spitting and let's keep it moving. <laughs> so we're cutting up the watermelon. We are looking for about two inch chunks here for these pieces. They are gonna cook down quite a bit, but I'm gonna have to take some time and get out all this, the, the little seeds here. If you buy a watermelon from the store and it's a seedless watermelon, you will save quite a bit of time. But since I was using one of my homegrown ones, and I don't really mind the extra steps because it tastes so good. Yeah, to me, I feel like 
Yeah, I, I like stomping out as many steps as possible when I'm cooking, but because this watermelon, the flavor is there, I feel like it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Now, I am always wary of vegan recipes that use fruit or vegetable as the protein in a dish. To be honest with you, never my thing because it makes an unbalanced meal. Not that's, my thing either. It, that, in my opinion, that's a problem with a lot of vegan recipes because then non-vegans look at this and they're like, you're just eating like fruit and, mm -hmm. and in this case, we're gonna make sushi out of this. Spoiler. Because I wanted to test the, the smoked salmon. We already salmon. said that, bud. Did I? They were making sushi? I think that's why people <laughs> clicked on this video. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> okay, so if you're eating something like that, there's no protein to it. It's like eating air. Whether it tastes the same or not, if you're making like, for example, fried chicken out of a mushroom, cool. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that tastes great. Is but a breaded mushroom not gonna be delectable? Absolutely, but is it gonna keep you satisfied and feeling full? No, it's not. And like, I've had these rants before. Cauliflower wings. Like, no, people. That ain't a wing. That's a breaded cauliflower. I'm sure um, it tastes great. The worst one, the worst one, I wanna know if you know what I'm guessing here. Jackfruit pulled pork. Okay, no that one too. Know. Sorry, we could go on for ages, but not not that one. Know what I was gonna say? Cabbage steak. Oh no. Just cause you sl and first of all, in it, if you're gonna do that, you can get maybe two proper slices. I know it's such a waste of time. That one is the dumbest one. I can't stand any of them. So this was kind of going against my nature to do this, but I had to see if it was gonna have the same taste and texture. I had to. I had to see. I Sometimes wanted to test you're it out. just curious. There's I was, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so very simple. You're just spraying with avocado oil, salt them. That's all that it takes to do this. And we're, they're going into a nice smoky oven, the Ninja Wood Fire Outdoor Oven here. Because the smoke is going to be the main flavor source here. Yes. Plus the actual watermelon itself, I, I'm guessing. Right? Yes. Okay. So the watermelon is sweet and it's going to lend a little bit of sweetness to the finished product. But I think a lot of people want to make this because smoked salmon is that like pinky reddy color and so is watermelon. It's like people with the carrot hot dogs, like, ugh. Can I ask you one thing? Yes. You have, I forget what it's called, but you have a fish-like um, thing that mimics fish flavor. Nori flakes. I have a whole bunch of different- Is it nori flakes? I have tons of different What's seaweed. What's that stuff that you sprinkle on stuff that's supposed to taste like fish? I have dulse flakes. I have that, a lot of different seaweed that. flakes. So why didn't you put that on there? Because I wanted to try this as is. It's supposed to, just with the smoke flavor and the texture, it's supposed to taste like smoked salmon. But I put together a nice little marinade here um, that is part of the recipe if you're I'm interested. So if you were to have this as like a poke bowl, for example, and you wanted to have more of a color to it. Ooh. Okay, so look at the color. Looks wise, I'm, in, I'm actually quite surprised So here. was I. I was like, okay, so looks wise, I'm impressed. It does look like little pieces of salmon. And it did have a smoky smell to it. So. Right off the bat, if you think about smoked salmon, there is that fishiness to it. But slightly fishy. Nobody wants fish that tastes like fish. We no. all want, everyone always says when it comes to fish, it's not fishy. And if it is fishy, it's it's old. Exactly. It's, so that's not good. Okay, so I took them out. I'm looking at them. I'm Beautiful. like, I'm, I'm impressed. Even with the cut lines, they started to look like um, flakes. Like if you look closely, I don't oh. know what's making that look very similar to salmon. Look at this piece. So it looks, because we've sprayed them with oil too, it ha it's oily. Did it feel a little bit meaty? It did, it felt squishy because smoked salmon doesn't that really- That is squishy. It smoked salmon is squishy. It's squishy. It's not like you're holding a piece of pork. It's not meaty. No, no. But it is squishy. So look at the inside. And it has like okay, the- Okay, that, that does look like It is salmon. mind blowing, like how much it does look like, it look and smell like smoked salmon. It's got the spit glands going on me, so that's why I feel like this This is looking very appetizing to me. It is, and it does. It has concentrated down, so it's the water has cooked out of look a lot it. of it. So look at the pieces. It does look alarmingly like smoked salmon. I had to try a couple pieces as I was um, cutting it yeah, up. Yeah, just, just straight up. It doesn't taste like smoked salmon, though. Does it taste like a watermelon that's had salt and smoke flavor added to it? No, and so it doesn't taste like that either. it's taken on its own vibe. It's taken on its its definite own vibe. So I wanted to, to treat this like smoked salmon and make it into like a Philadelphia type roll. <laughs> Very simple flavors. We got some vegan cream cheese, some cucumber, and the smoked salmon. So I wanted to see if it would, the smoked salmon. Yeah. So I wanted to see if like the flavors would shine and what this would be like. It is overwhelmingly smoky. So you know how smoked salmon is like, it's smoky, but it's not too smoky. This was really, really smoky. You know what I think? What? Sometimes I feel like smoke adheres to wet things. It, yes, I think it picked up a lot yes. of smoke. 
I don't know if that's like a science or a scientific, but that's in my experience. The wetter the meat or the wetter the whatever you're smoking, mm -hmm. it picks it up. And it was in there for an hour and a half. That's it? No, but that's a long time for this unit. That is a pretty long well, time. Well, it's a long time, but it's when if you think about low and slow, an hour and a half is nothing. No, exactly. But it, since it is a vegetable, you don't need to break down any muscle fibers or anything. Because it's not like it's a pulled pork that you have to worry about it being But you're in there. drying it out, though. You're drying it out slightly. You don't want it to get to leather. So you don't mm -hmm. need to fully dry it out like if you were to dehydrate it or something, which would take like eight or nine hours. I don't know about in this unit, but it would take a really long time to dehydrate a watermelon. But I was pretty impressed with the look and the smell of it. But as I said, essentially, if you live a vegan lifestyle and you're making this and you're thinking like, oh, cool, this is like a Philadelphia roll. Sure, it looks like it. Yeah, it does. Sure, it smells like it. Sure, it kind of tastes like it. But that's not a satisfying meal. You're essentially just eating rice and vegetables and fruit. Agreed. Like, am I wrong here, people? No, I agree with you. Like, that. does it look stunning? Absolutely. If, I, if, if you serve that to me, I would be like, this is a Philadelphia roll, like, through and through. Yes. And I, so, could you, did it taste as good as if that, if, if you didn't tell someone this was watermelon? and you just served it to them, would they be able to know? No, I, don't, I definitely don't think they'd be able to know. Really? I think you can fool a lot of people. So I was gonna say the verdict for me personally is, is it delicious? Yes. Is it a lot of work? Kind of. If you is think, it gorgeous? Check, check, check. Absolutely check. If you wanna impress some people with vegan food, kind of. But if you're, if you're vegan and are you gonna be eating this on the regular and feeling satisfied? No, you're not. Take with that what you want, people. <laughs> Do I recommend smoking a fruit or a veg and adding it to like something like sushi as a protein source? No, I don't. Do you recommend growing a watermelon? Cause you've convinced me. Grow it and eat it though. Maybe skip this. 